You are now listening to the Legends Lingo Podcast, presented by CouchGuysSports.com. Here are your hosts, Al. You didn't ask him about I that long? I was getting there, Beetle. Oh, what the holy. fuck kind of host are you? I mean, you're probably in the lead. Holy shit, dude. Someone Chris is trip, please. Powder. Yes, sir. And Matty D. Uh, and on top of that, now you have a triple effect. You have... The Niners looking for a long-term answer with Jimmy G in-house. Maybe they don't want to spend the money on Jimmy G. Maybe he gets freed up because they go after a guy like Teddy Bridgewater, who now theoretically could be freed up. So there's a lot of dominoes to fall. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Legends Lingo Podcast, episode 120, presented as always by CouchGuysSports.com. Go check out CouchGuysSports.com. Check out the blogs, check out the podcast, check out the Twitch channel, which is actually live as we're recording. So you'll be able to watch it on our Twitch channel, Couch Guys Sports on Twitch. Go check that out and subscribe if you have Amazon Prime. It's free. Check out our YouTube channel. You'll see all of our great YouTube content up there. Couch Guys Sports Podcast is up there. Our episodes are up every week. Besides, obviously, this episode, our episode last week with 98.5's Bob Sosi is officially up, talking Pat's draft analysis. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, Alan Hegan, alongside, as always, Tom Potter-Cadmus and Maddie DeRozier. Guys, what is up? Nothing, Al. Just had a nice weekend camping with my girlfriend this past weekend. Kind of set the body and got ready for um, some more um, podcasting in the future. Love it. Absolutely. Matty D, you got quite the look going tonight, I must say. You know, the other week, I, I mentioned this to Powder, when the sun's out, the visor comes out. So, <laughs> you know, when you're good, you look good, you look good, you podcast good. So that's what I'm all about tonight. Look good. Bob's up here. Get him on the all-time high. Listen, look good, feel good, play good, baby. You exactly. gotta do it. Gotta do it up. We got a lot that we gotta talk about tonight, though. Jalen Brown officially done for the season for the Celtics. So where does that put them? And could a few trade options be on the table for the offseason? We'll get into that. The Boston Bruins are officially in the playoffs. They are locked in as the three seed. They will be taking on the Washington Capitals in the first round of the NHL playoffs. And we're going to get into some Red Sox stuff later on. But first, guys, the Celtics just can't catch a break this year. Their luck is insane. So, Came out the other day. I believe it was it was actually Monday. So it was Monday, and the report came out, and the Celtics confirmed it. Shams confirmed it, and Woj confirmed it. Jalen Brown out for the season with basically a fracture in his left wrist. It's the same injury that Romeo Langford had throughout pretty much last year and for a majority of the first half of this year. So obviously that's a bad break for the Celtics, especially as they're fighting for their lives to get into the playoffs and hopefully not play in the play-in tournament. But this is just the epitome of the Celtics season this year. They couldn't catch a break. They couldn't stay healthy. They, I think their starters total this season played like 292 minutes. That's the equivalent of like five or six games together. They could never, ever, ever stay healthy. Like it was just all season. Jason Tatum had COVID. Tristan Thompson was out for a while. You know, you got guys off the bench like Peyton Pritchard was out for a while. Jalen Brown missed a few games beforehand. Evan Fournier was out for a long time in health and um, safety protocols. So this team just couldn't stay together. And that's why the inconsistency was what it was. Jason Tatum had a great year. Jalen uh, Jalen Brown, great year, first time All-Star. But this is just this is just how it is. You know, it wasn't the Celtics year. They started off eight and three. That was great. But now we're seeing that obviously Jalen Brown's going to be a big piece moving forward, but for right now he's out. So you kind of just play the last four games. You either play in the playing tournament. Maybe you get lucky, sneak in the six seed. Maybe you get bounced by Milwaukee in the first round. Maybe you make it to the second round, but it's just this year. I'm done with this year. Get me to next year and get me to the off season. But I want to kick it to you guys. Now we'll start with Maddie. Then we'll go to powder for the next one. Maddie, just kind of overall thoughts on the Jalen Brown injury and how that impacts this season and even future years. So I don't, to be honest, I don't even exactly know when this wrist injury occurred. He missed all of last week due to an ankle injury. And they were trying to, you know, tell fans that they were being precautious on an ankle injury after he collided with Tatum at the end of uh, 
the the Portland Trailblazers game. It was the game in L.A. It was the it was the game against the Lakers in L.A. I think he collided with somebody and he was holding his wrist. That's what I remember. So he's had a bum. He's had a hurt wrist now for a, a long time. So it seems like maybe he he played pretty good on it. So I guess that's a positive, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a sliver of a silver lining. But this team as a whole never could get momentum going. They just continuously teetered up and down and. They're, they are where they are because, like you said earlier, they didn't play together much as, you know, the starters didn't. And it, even when they did, it just didn't seem like they were a cohesive unit. So this year has been kind of a disastrous year. Uh, they, uh, you know, I think themselves are looking forward to next year, and I'm sure we'll get into it. There's a lot that can happen in the offseason. Oh, yeah. We're going to be getting into it very, very soon, right after Powder gives us his opinion on Jalen Brown's situation and everything else. So, um, I don't know if anybody listened to the Section 10 podcast. I think it came out today, either yesterday or today. But Coley had a really good point that he made about how um, Jalen Brown kind of hasn't had any time to himself in a year. Like, uh, he played really well last year, and then COVID hit and everything happened. And then he drove from Boston all the way down to Atlanta during – the Black Lives Matter movement and all that stuff. And he led marches and all that. Then the Celtics made it win to bubble and they made it all the way to Eastern Conference Finals. And they had the third shortest offseason of any team in the NBA. He came back and was playing career high in minutes. And he was having his career year. He was having his breakout year, really being a key piece to the Celtics' success this past year. And just... Like Coley said, hopefully it's a time for Jalen Brown to finally just take a deep breath and relax for a couple weeks. Even though obviously you never want it because of an injury, but hopefully he can finally have that time to just relax and get his mind right so that he can come back and um, be great for next year off this injury. So hopefully he can keep getting better like he has each and every year, and hopefully this injury is not a setback. So – a typical injury like this takes about three to six months to heal. So best case scenario is going to be all set by, you know, end of August, middle of middle to end of August. Yeah. Worst case, he misses like the first couple weeks to month of the season. That's what it's looking like right now. So it's kind of funny that we mentioned Jalen Brown, because obviously he's done for the year, but it brought up an interesting hypothetical and we can thank couch guy sports. I would say interim president right now, Jared Scali, yeah. who came out with this on Twitter today and he tagged couch guy sports in it. And I want your guys' opinion on it. Would you trade straight up? Now we'll start with straight up and then we'll, then we'll do a deal here. If if you could trade Jalen Brown straight up for Bradley Beal, would you do it? Keep in mind, Beal and Tatum, very close friends and Beal's in a situation in Washington where looks like Russ could be out after this year. And then all they have really is Davis Bertans. That's about it. So again, if you're the Celtics and you can get Bradley Beal straight up for Jalen Brown, do you do it? Potter, why don't you go first? Because I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Um, I'm just looking up Beal's exact age right now. So he is 27. So obviously Beal is an established player. You know what you're going to get from him. He's a scorer. He will, and like you said, he's good friends with Tatum. Like, you know, there'll be chemistry right there. But I don't know if I would do it because Brown just, he's so young. He has, he, I think he has so much to grow. And I think he could become a legit star in this league. Maybe not a superstar, but a legit star and be the number two on this team for the next five to 10 years. Where Beal, yeah, you have him and he could be good for, maybe five years, but he's already 27. So once you get on the other side, 30, that's when you start that decline probably. So hopefully, like, I think Brown has another good 10 years on him that the Celtics can keep him. I think Brown is definitely, uh, I think, in my opinion, better option for the long term. So I would keep Brown. Okay. Maddie. See, I think I would – do it. Now, I love Jalen Brown. I love what he represents. I love what he does off the court. I love that he's a part of the Boston Celtics while doing those things. But at the end of the day, it, it, they need, for lack of a better term, they need their clubhouse leader. They need their, like, the the, the top dog. The, the two guys they have now just aren't 
taking the team to the next level. And if you can get, you know, the guy who was leading the league and scoring for a majority of the season, you know, you do it. And you got three years before 30, like you just mentioned, Potter. So I'm, yeah. I'm pulling that trigger. And you know what? I'm going to agree with you. Ma- who the heavy heart? Of course. I, wanna, I will. So, so I'm going to agree with you, Maddie. I think I pulled the trigger on this trade too. Because you know what? This is also, and this is going to go into sort of our next little kind of hypothetical here. If you could do a deal with Washington where you sent along, <coughs> excuse me, you sent along Kemba Walker, you send along, you can either send along Kemba or Marcus Smart. Maybe you re-sign Smart and then you do a sign and trade with him. One of those two, maybe you throw in a guy like either Naismith or Pritchard, and then maybe a guy like a Grant Williams, and then you throw in a couple picks, let's just say. You're telling me that that's not enough to entice Washington to want to trade Bradley Beal when you're getting three or four quality players and you're getting picks out of it when you're probably going to restart anyway? I mean, I don't know. That's just me. Because if you're Bradley Beal, you should be wanting to get out of that situation. Washington's not going anywhere. But Boston can go somewhere if Danny, excuse me, if Danny Ainge actually pulls the trigger and makes a move. Because let's think about this. Kevin Garnett, Isaiah Thomas, Kyrie Irving. What other trades has he really made in his about 20 years here? That have worked out. I mean. And Ray Allen. Sorry. And Ray Allen. Right. The, the, the big three, you know, getting those two trades done, those work. But, you know, they are, he is riddled with bad ones. Remember the Jeff Green? You got him for Kendrick Perkins. That uh, really didn't work out. Nope. You know, the, it, I don't know. It's a little bit more hairy than I think most people would realize when you really dive in. Yeah. It, it is. Just, oh, sorry. But I was just going to say, if it's a deal like that, then, yeah, maybe if you can get, like, obviously, yes. The Celtics definitely need that leader, like Maddie said, that is a big time that can take the team to the next level, and that is a like was leading the league in scoring. He's a true threat and one of the better players in the league. That I think goes kind of under the radar a little bit because obviously he's on a struggling Washington team that's not playing very well. So if you can have a good deal where you can. St- still keep some of the top players on the Celtics and get Beal, then yeah, I think they'll put them over the top. You know what, guys? This Celtics team, it, there's so many interesting things that can happen this offseason. I think you got to make a move if you're Danny Ainge because you know what? A lot of people say that this season could be on Brad Stevens. It could be on the players, which Stevens I don't agree with because I think there's only so much you can do as a coach. I think the players need to take a little responsibility because they underperformed. Yeah. But Danny Ainge, you're the one that put this team in this situation. You're the one that is struggling to fight for a playoff spot right now. And now you lose your number two option. So now you got to try to make that up. You got to hope Kemba Walker goes back to the Kemba Walker of Charlotte. You have to hope Evan Fournier shows up and is healthy to even have a chance. Yeah. And that's the position that you would put this team in. You love your younger guys. That's great. Sometimes you got to get rid of them to get that superstar piece, which they desperately need. But you know what I need right now? What do What's you that? need, Al? I need a burger. Ooh, and there's a few places that we can talk about for burgers yeah. because we have a few good places that we are going to talk about. The first that we are going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is Cowbell Restaurants. We have a featured sponsor of the month for the month of May. That is Cowbell Burgers. Cowbell has multiple locations throughout the area of Southern Maine. Any vacationers traveling to Maine this month and this upcoming summer, you need to make sure that you're checking this place out. The Cowbell has three locations throughout Maine. The original location is in Biddeford, which is about 20 minutes south of Portland and connected to Old Orchard Beach. The second one is about an hour north from the Biddeford location, located in Lewiston right off the highway. And the third location is their newest one in Scarborough, just open, uh, that just opened up a little bit over a year ago. Cowbell has received multiple accolades in the past five years of existence, One of them being the top ones, and I'm telling you right now, the top award that they've gotten is being named Maine's Best Burger in the past two years in the number one most popular vacation guide magazine. That magazine, Down East Magazine. So they're getting pretty good notoriety here. So make sure you go get a burger while you're in Maine. Going to Cowbell is a must try if you get the chance to travel to Maine anytime in the future. And we're going to sweeten up the deal a little bit. We got a little deal for all you listeners out there. 
if you go to the cowbell, any of the three locations, and you tell them that Legends Lingo sent you, you will get 10% off of your meal. So you go, yeah, 10. Put the fives up again, Maddie. 10, 10% off. Just by going in and saying that Legends Lingo sent you to these restaurants. 10% off your meal. Search them online or check them out at their website at www.cowbellmain.com. Cowbell Maine. One of the best burgers you'll eat if you're in the state of Maine. 10% off if you tell them that Legends Lingo sent you. Love it. <clears throat> Shout out to Cowbell for being our sponsor of the month. But we're going to get into a different topic now. We're going to get into the Boston Bruins for a little bit. Mm-hmm. We don't talk we don't mm-hmm. talk hockey much on this podcast, but the playoffs are around the corner and we got to talk about it a little bit. So, Boston Bruins have finished off. They're actually they're finishing up their regular season as we're recording. So as you're listening to this or as you're watching this, the Bruins regular season is done and they are set to take on the Washington Capitals in the first round of the NHL playoffs. And it is a 7:15 start time for game 1 in Washington. Now these teams aren't they're very they're very familiar with each other. They played each other eight times this year with the NHL realignment. And I gotta tell you guys something. I'm ready to get I'm ready to be on the NHL bandwagon again. This is the time to shine. Oh yeah. yeah. This Definitely. is the time for the casual fans to shine. I'm a casual fan, but I love the Bruins in the playoffs. They are so fun to watch. I'm gonna try to watch every game, every period, every chance I get, I'm gonna try to watch them. This is gonna be an exciting matchup. I think it's gonna be a physical matchup. And honestly, I just want to see that dirtbag Tom Wilson cry. I want somebody to literally put him in his place, and I want the Bruins to come out of this series ready to go the next round. My series prediction, I got the Bruins in six. I think it's going to be a tough matchup. I think it's going to be a good matchup. But ultimately, I think the Bruins are very talented. Their first line, that quote-unquote perfection line of, of Pasternak, Marchand, and Bergeron is a line that's going to be tough to compete with. And that second line with David Krejci, Taylor Hall, and Craig Smith. Oh my goodness. The options that second line has been rejuvenated since Taylor Hall came at the deadline. So my final prediction Bruins and six in the first round, I'll kick it to Matty D and then we'll go to powder. Just thoughts on the Bruins series and anything you wanted to add. So I think this is going to be a really, it's going to be a bomber type of series. It's going to be a, like you said, a real physical. These teams have played each other a ton this year and their win loss record is pretty much even. You know, I think the, the Bruins have the upper hand slightly in terms of, of wins and losses this year, which is good because, you know, the Bruins historically have had a real, real trouble with the Capitals. So, you know, get them out of the way in the first the first round. If they can get past them, you know, now all of a sudden they're building some momentum and they're playing great hockey right now. So, you know, having said all that, come Saturday, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I got the Bruins in seven. Ooh, taking it to a seven-game series. The greatest two words in all sports. Game seven. Oh, so sweet. Oh, I love it. Powder? Yeah, just kind of going off what Maddie said. The Bruins had the season series 4 1 and 2 as of right now. Aren't they playing the Caps tonight, too? To finish yeah, the, the, yeah, they're both playing their, their, um, yeah, their minor league rosters, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the Bruins had the season series, but like both of you just said, it's very close. And I'm going to agree with Maddie. I'm going to take the Bruins in seven. I just think. It's going to come down to that last game. And I think the, like Al, you said, the top line of the Bruins, I just think, because obviously Ovechkin's been a little banged up this year. I think just having the top line of the Bruins, I think they're just going to come big that game seven and the Bruins are going to take it, but it's going to be physical. It's going to be exactly what you want to see out of a hockey playoff series. And it's funny to see our old friend Sedano Char come back in his first playoff run without the Bruins in a long, long time. And, of course, it's against the Bruins, but it'll be fun to see him play a little bit, and hopefully the Bruins can come out on top. Yeah, that's such a wild storyline. You know, the first year from the longtime captain away from Boston, they face off in the first round. Yeah. You don't make better stories than that in no. sports. Except if Tom Wilson again gets – Cries. You know, cries, yeah. yes. Cries like a little baby. That would be a better storyline. But, yes, it's Daniel Chara, obviously – being a part of the Bruins for so long, going to the Washington Capitals this year, really on a dirt cheap deal. I think it was like a, a veterans minimum yeah. type of deal. So, I mean, when you add all that together and this Washington Capitals team is good, you forget they have Alex Ovechkin, who's one of the best players in the NHL. And he's been one of the best players for at least a decade now, I think. Oh yeah. Some, yeah. Some, long time. Something like long that. Time. They have um, Kuznetsov, who's also very good. 
obviously Big Z, Tom Wilson, eh. and then I think it's going to come down to the goaltenders. And honestly, I would take my chances with Tuka Rask or Jeremy Swayman. If Jeremy Swayman came in, I, I looked up his stats on the Couch Guy Sports podcast. He was 7-2 and two this year with a 1.44 goals against average with a 946 save percentage. I'll take that every time out of my backup. Yeah. Like those are good numbers for a 22 year old kid. Yes. And guess what? Tuka's going to be gone either, either after this year or next year. So you got to start thinking long term. And if this Swayman kid can continue to put up those numbers, the future is in good hands. So I'm looking forward to it. I think you guys are looking forward to it. Any Definitely. final thoughts before we kind of move on? Uh, more than a final thought, I just got a quick question for the two of you gentlemen. Do they carry three goaltenders or do they leave Halak out and they go with Swayman and Rask? Or do they go Halak and, and Rask and go all bets? I think they go I think they go Rask and Swayman. I think Halak's the odd man out, unfortunately. Swayman's played too well to really get the boot at this point. That's just me, though. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to agree with Al. I just think having the two goalies and having one veteran and one young guy just – because sometimes you just need that youth just energy to come in if mm. Rass is struggling for whatever reason. Sometimes having that youth jump starts the team. You know, it's funny, Rich, my guy Manny at work, shout out you, Manny. Uh, he thinks that that Halak, remember that Halak blow up a couple days ago when yeah. he gave up that the game losing goal? Yeah. He thinks a lot of that blow up was him realizing, you know, the playoffs are kind of out for him and maybe his career with the Boston Bruins are out. So yeah. you can see a lot of that passion come out when he lost that game. And maybe my man Manny was right. Manny could be right because you know what? He's realizing that. You know, there's a playoff roster spot that he was fighting for, and he might have just lost it with that blow up. The other exactly. Night. So I couldn't agree with you more on that. But the Bruins series is going to be fun. We'll be recapping it weekly as the mm-hmm. playoffs go along. Hopefully, it'll be for the next couple of weeks and they make a deep playoff run. We'll see what happens. But before we do that, if you want to watch the Bruins game, let's say game three or game four, but you can't quite go to the game because you don't have tickets, the place that you should check out. If you're in the Boston area, in the Massachusetts area, is A and B Burgers. Powder? Yep. I'll take that away. So Legends Lingo is proudly sponsored by A and B Kitchen and Bar, located in Boston. It just reopened at the end of March. Um, and it's located on Causeway Street, like Al said, right across the street from the TD Garden. So if you still want that atmosphere of the TD Garden during the Bruins playoff run, even the Celtics playoff run, you can go to a and B kitchen bar right across the street and see the people go in and you just kind of feel the atmosphere of the crowds getting ready and or the misery of the Celtics losing in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. But I, I get what you're going. But you with. can you can drink what you saw with the A and B kitchen and bar. There you go. Um, they are the newest spot to go before or after, even like we just said during a game to get to uh, an elevated New England pub menu with locally. Uh, made dishes like chicken pot pie, meatloaf, and um, clams. Made like I said, locally caught, and they have look. They're all locally. Everything is local for A and B Kitchen Bar. Like the breweries are from Gentile Brewery in Beverly, Lord Hobo and Woburn and Notch. And if you're looking for an outdoor dining, they have a raised patio right outside the garden. And but if you want to have that outdoor feel but be indoors, they have. 32 feet of open garage doors along Causeway Street and 16 feet of open garage doors dirt along Beverly Street to sit right next to the outdoors but still be indoors. And like I said, if you don't have tickets to a game but you still want to watch it right next to it, they have nine newly installed 70-inch TVs. So if you can sit in there and watch a game and get such a great atmosphere. They are open Monday through Sunday at 3 p.m., but if there's a day game, they will be open at 11 a.m. And I know each week we've had them for about a month that I say we're going to get some. I got the ball rolling on that, so I'll probably know more later this week about getting us a promo code like in Cowbell. So then you can tell them we sent you and hopefully get a discount. So hopefully in the next week we'll have a promo code for you from a b Kitchen Bar. But thank you, a b Kitchen Bar, for sponsoring Legends Lingo. A lot of food on this podcast, and there may be another sponsor down the line that is not food-related. I will say that, but th- there's going to be something coming down the pipeline. So we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. A little tease for everybody. Final topic of the night, the Red Sox. They're still playing well. 
They're 22 yeah. and 14. The latest MLB rankings came out and they have the Red Sox as number one in all the MLB. Rightfully so. They have the best record. They play really well on the road. They're leading a ton of offensive categories. Their pitching is holding up. It's been great so far. It's actually fun to watch the Red Sox again. And you know, it's not fun watching the Celtics because I have them on my TV. I don't know why I tortured myself, but back to the Red Sox. I'm going to be flipping back and forth. So Red Sox, they're looking good. The only thing that worries me is the stretch they have coming up because they're playing Oakland. They're playing the Angels. The Phillies are in there. The Braves are in there. And then when you get into June, you get the Yankees and the Astros. So I think the next like month or so is really going to tell us how good this team is. Are they a contender or are they a pretender? Me personally, I think now you might be able to say that they're a contender because they're doing everything right. They're pitching well. They're hitting well. They're getting clutch hitting, good pitching performances across the board. And you still have Chris Sale that's going to be coming back in June or July. So you have a lot that you can be looking forward to as a Red Sox fan. But I want to kick it to Powder, and then we'll go to Matty B. Or Matty D, sorry, Matty D. I, I talked to Matty B earlier, so that's why. Sorry, Matty D. I knew I was going to do that at some point. But, Powder, overall Red Sox thoughts. Just like kind of going off what you said, I feel like you hit the nail on the head with everything. Their pitching has been um, playing unbelie- unbelievable. Their offense is what we thought their offense would be, and I think there are still a couple guys who aren't clicking 100% just yet, but I think once a whole lineup gets hot, it's going to be a team to watch, and their bullpen, for most part, has been very, very good, which we all said it before the year started was what we're most nervous about is the Red Sox bullpen. Are they going to be good? And then you have Nick Pavetta pitching like what we all thought he could because obviously Heim Bloom went out and got him, and we heard a lot of good things about Nick Pavetta. He's been awesome, and hopefully the Red Sox can stay hot, even if they're in second place in the AL East come all-star breaker right before trade deadline if you get Chris Sale back that's your ace that's your leader in the clubhouse as a pitcher and everything that could bolster you up to take the division I think I think Al I agree with you I think they're definitely contenders but this next month where we really have to see if they're gonna if they're playing like the Yankees are starting to turn around and look like a very good team standing very hot right now so Mm -hmm. You run into them when they're playing well, like you want to see if the Red Sox can stand up to the Yankees and the Astros and the better teams in the whole league and see how they really are. So hopefully this next month, the Red Sox keep playing above 500 baseball and we can keep saying, Hey, they're one of the best teams in all of MLB. Well said. Matty. Yeah. I believe this team are contenders. I mean, if you guys remember when we did our preseason talk, I had to win an AL East. So I've always been pretty high on this nucleus in this team and as a general, in, in general, uh, you guys mentioned the Yankees, they're actually playing good. And I think that's fantastic. I much would, I would much rather have a Yankees Red Sox battle where they're both good. Cause when one stinks, let's face it, it, it just, it, it weighs down the summer just a little bit. Yeah. But this team, their offense, like we mentioned is it's one of the best in the league, leading the league in runs, average slugging, and one stat that stands out to me as a team that I just think is, is great for their long-term success, they are 28th in K percentage, meaning they strike out the third least in baseball. And in a game okay. where average as, is not at an all-time low, pitching Ks are at an all-time high, whiffs, all that stuff, record highs. The Red Sox are bucking the trend, and their offense is clicking. And I think a lot of this to do with their play IQ and their ability to, to score runs. Full heartedly agree. And I think that's a great stat you bring up because at any level, not just the MLB level, it can be the high school level. It can be the youth level. It can be the college level. If you're striking out more, t- more than half the time, you're making it easy for the other team. Very, very yeah. easy. You don't have to make as many plays, but if you're putting the ball in play more often than not, you're forcing the other team to make, you know, if it's a 27 out game, you know, nine inning game, you want to force them to make, 17 outs you want to force them to make you know 18 19 20 outs in a game if possible in the field and that's something that the Red Sox are doing which is great now one little tidbit I wanted to talk about and then we can talk about something in the MLB that might be going on and then we'll get out of here for the night Michael Chavis now obviously he's been brought up because uh Kike Hernandez is on the IL right now so here's my thing Michael Chavis had a great spring training 
He's a guy that has proven he can handle being up at the big league level. So my question is this. If he plays well, if he's hitting the ball well and he's playing well defensively, is it a tough choice for the Red Sox to make and be like, should we really send him back down? Or do they believe that much in guys like Bobby Dalbeck and Franchi Cordero that they can just say, thanks for your service, Javis. Go back down to Worcester. Yeah, I think, I, you know, I think to answer that question, I think in the short term, he is their go-between from, you know, Wor- Worcester to the Boston, and he'll fill in for injuries. Uh, Long term, I could see him being kind of a, a fluffer for a trade because uh, I don't know if they are going to really give him the opportunity. Corey came out, I think, this afternoon and mentioned that both uh, Arroyo and Hernandez will be back immediately when their DL stints are up. So uh, that means Chavis goes that back down to the minors. And I th- think that's what you'll see a lot of them this year. And eventually, if there aren't any catastrophic injuries to the lineup, I think you see him traded. Powder? Yeah, I have to agree with Maddie. I just think he's going to be used as trade bait because, like you said, Al, he's definitely proven he can play at the big league level. So there's definitely a team that could use a guy who's kind of a utility guy. He has proven he can play a couple different positions in the field. He's played first, played second, played third, played left field. Like you can kind of bounce him around all over the place. So there, there has to be a team that can add a power bat that can play kind of anywhere. So even if he's a guy off a bench for someone, he probably would like that more than a minor, being a minor league player for the Red Sox. So hopefully, like, I hope for the best for Michael Chavis. Obviously, I'd love to see him in a Red Sox uniform, but if it has to be somewhere else, then good luck to him, and hopefully it brings back a big return for the Red Sox. So one last thing that we're going to talk about, and this is MLB-based, because if you remember our early days, we were an MLB-centric podcast, but then we decided to focus more on Boston sports, but that's okay. In the o- overall MLB, the Oakland Athletics are potentially looking at changing locations. So this is just a real simple question. It'll be quick, and then we'll get out of here for the night. Do you want to say? Do you want to see the Athletics stay in Oakland, or would you rather see them move? And if you want to see them move, where would you like to see them go? So I have actually watched baseball games at the Oakland Coliseum, and that place is a absolute dump toilet bowl. Terrible place to see a game. Awful. I have nothing nice to say about that stadium at all. At all. So if they – Tell I'm us how you really feel. <laughs> I am all for them moving. And if they do, I'd like to see them go to Portland. You know, Portland seems to be a pretty good baseball town that's kind of untapped in terms of the market. You know, it would be an instant rivalry with the Mariners. And, uh, you know, let's face it. The, the, whatever, whatever the powers at bet, that be in Oakland, whether it be the team owners or the city in general – None of them have done either one a favor. The stadium's decrepit. They don't do anything for one another. They keep threatening new stadiums, pulling the proposals, threatening to relocate, pulling that back. I think it's finally time for them to break up. Uh, Apparently, professional sports teams in Oakland aren't a good fit. You know, we just saw Oakland leave. Uh, uh, The Golden State Warriors are moving out of Oakland and moving to a neighboring city. Maybe it's time for the A's to follow suit and head to the Pacific Northwest and play in Portland. Um, so I have two places in mind. Like there has there the projected stadium that they wanted that I think just got turned down was gonna be absolutely beautiful, but honestly that's probably not gonna happen. I have two places, either Las Vegas, I just think you saw the Ra- the Raiders did and you see how the um, Knights do. It's, I think it's a good sports town, but I kind of want to see a baseball team back in Montreal. I think the Montreal fans are diehard. I think <laughs> Canadian baseball fans are diehard. If I know when the Blue Jays aren't good, the Rogers Center is kind of dead, but when they're good, that place, I want to go there so bad, especially in the playoff atmosphere. I've heard it's, there's nothing like that place when it's rocking, like when the Batot, Batista bad flip. Like, I just seen that play shake. Like, I think the Canadian baseball fans need another team. I don't think just one is enough for them. And I think getting a team back into Montreal would be great for baseball. I think it's a great call. Great call, Powder. Okay. I, I, got, a, I got a place. If they move, I would like to see them go to Las Vegas. Because I think having a baseball team 
a football team and a hockey team for that state and that just area would be phenomenal. It would be great, plain and simple. I don't think there's much more to say to that. So I'm going with Vegas. Do you guys think that they would have to build like a, a stadium like Texas just built where they have a retractable roof? Because it can get quite uh, yeah. quite hot in Las Vegas yeah. in the summer. Yes, yeah. I, I think Definitely. they would. Yeah. That, 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 that would that could work. And, you know, there are some prominent baseball players from that area. You know, guys like Bryce Harper, Chris Bryant. They yeah. would instantly, I would feel like, uh, you know, be drawn to go play for their home team. Definitely. Or their new Definitely. home team, I guess. Yeah. That's where we're going to leave it, though. The Oakland A's, they might be moving around somewhere. The Red Sox continue to be red hot. The Bruins are starting their playoff run. The Celtics, well, we'll see what happens with them. Rest up, Jalen Brown, because we're going to need you for the future. But yes. guys, mm-hmm. any final thoughts before we sign off for the night? Uh, just I am so excited to watch the Celtics play the La Jolla Marymount role and uh, have a playing game. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, yep. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Powder, any final thoughts? No, just go bees, get off on the right foot in the playoffs on Saturday, and Red Sox stay hot. All righty. Again, eat at A and B Burger, A and B Kitchen and Bar. Uh, cowbell burger go check those places out if you're in massachusetts or maine respectively uh shout out to everybody at couch guy sports the views keep going in the right direction the, the whole website's just going in the right direction <coughs> as i am going in the wrong direction health wise but anyways check out again everything couchguysports.com check everything out if you go to cowbell tom legends lingo sent you 10 percent off of your meal if nothing else for episode 120 we got Maddie DeRozier, Tom Powder Cadmus. I'm your host, Alan Hagan. Rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and everywhere else. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week for episode 121. Yes, sir.